Oracles connect data that is not on the chain with the chain. How is that ever possible? You call a smart function, basically by doing it non-atomically. If you take a look at this screenshot right here, um, your, um, you know, your, your, uh, your, your, your consumer needs to both be able to request data from the Chainlink Oracle to say, hey, um, can you tell me about tomorrow's weather? Mm -hmm. And then, uh, I mean, what will happen is the Oracle will um, emit an event, right? Right to, the, right to the log on the chain. You have a node, which is a server, right? Just bring your old server out there. Um, but it's listening, usually through WebSockets, uh, for events on the contracts that it's paying attention to on the chain, right? So your, your, your node is associated with your Oracle contract. Um, and it's, oh, hey, it emitted an event. Time for me to go to work. Do, 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 do. I go out to the network, I go get the information, and I submit the information, like a number, back into the smart contract, my Oracle. The Oracle then remits that fulfillment through the fulfill function. And that's how you do asynchronous processes on the chain, right? At block one, you make your request, emit your event. At block two, you fulfill that request and run that fulfill, and now your consumer has the information it was looking for. Yeah, but why not cut out the middleman and go right to the source, a uh, data source? Uh, smart contracts cannot talk uh, outside of the chain. They don't have a mechanism for doing outside um, calls. I, I don't see the why um, the data, why, why does the API need to li live as a blockchain and not just a API Lambda function? Well, basically the, 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 the idea behind the Oracle is to connect the stuff on the chain with a Lambda function. But it puts you in a position where you can have smart contracts that are sensitive to information that lives off chain. But then it's garbage. Right? So you, garbage you, can, you can set up a smart contract that's like a swap based on weather or a, or you know, to use a less legal example, a bet based on sports. Yeah, but the data source can still be fallible. So I don't see, right? Well, right. So the the, uh, the other aspect of, um, of the Oracle that Chainlink tries to bring to the party is being distributed, right? So the uh, you'd have multiple oracles providing multiple sources of data. So a Chainlink price feed would include things like, you know, there there is a Chainlink um, contract that's on, say, Ethereum that has the price of uh, Solana, right? And that price of Solana is being fed by multiple oracles, which are giving it different answers. And so it's giving you oh, both is, okay. answers to the spread. Okay, so you get to uh, crowdsource the truthiness of the input data. <laughs> right, and by having it from multiple sources, presumably you can get uh, potentially a better answer. Uh, I'm, I'm a little sketchy as to how super useful that is, but it's a thing you can do. Cool. Actually, the, the single source stuff to me is actually really interesting um, because the, the single source stuff is how you just straightforwardly have a smart contract that can be powered by external data. Because smart contract can handle the money and handle the disposition and who should be paid under what circumstances, what the value really is, instead of having a, an institutional uh, broker who's handling those uh, transactions. And some of these things like, you know, um, building a fair game uh, using uh, the uh, randomized function, verifiable randomized functions, which is one of the serve, which is probably the biggest use of Chainlink right now. Why is a random because number so covered? You can't get a random number on the chain. Remember, anything you do on the chain is necessarily deterministic. Yeah, but you right? could, you yeah, could, you could approximate random, the I would answer. think, fairly easily. Like you come up with a function that could do that, I would think. Even though well, there, but, but, but based on what? What's going to be your seed? Right. If your seed is something like the timestamp, I mean, it's true. There's some degree of variation in the timestamp, but it's hackable because the question of like I see, at I what timestamp the block goes is going to be determined by the miners. So if the code's transparent, then it's reverse engineerable. Yeah. And all the code's transparent, right? So the, the, your your best case scenario is security through obscurity that nobody cares enough to game your system. Um, but if anybody cares enough to game your system, it's certainly gameable by generating the random number off chain. It becomes verifiable, verifiably random. So know, that's uh, so. so so Chainlink is actually this whole area of oracles is not something I understood before starting this hackathon. But now, I mean, there's a big hole in the market and we're even looking at uh, how to bring down the cost of building a node. Like their their default way of building a node is um, they have a button you can push to go deploy it over on AWS, hmm. which I kind of say is, is slick. Yeah, but is that um, economically feasible? Basically, <clears throat> you need to make sure that you're going to get paid enough for the oracular calls 
uh, mm. for that that hosting to be worth it to you. But like, if you go host, like you know, the way they do it on AWS, it's designed to not require anything third party, but it also makes it really expensive. Yeah. Uh, so like we're talking about like you know maybe a hundred, two hundred a month, which is quite a lot to be putting up just, and that's just for the hosting costs. So the other thing we're looking at is using um, uh, DigitalOcean uh, to make a very, very inexpensive um, uh, Chainlink node. And we're saying instead of hosting your own ETH, um, you know, ETH endpoint, just use Alchemy, right? Or Infura. And between those, I mean, you, we might be able to get this thing down to five bucks a month. But it can't call a third party API, correct? No, it can't call anything. Well, when you say third party, it can't call anything that's not on the chain. And that's the reason why we use something indirect. That's where the Oracle pattern comes in. So you know, we, we write something to the chain and then we can admit, this, what this doesn't show is how you can admit an event. Emitting events, are basically additional bits that um, get written right alongside the chain. And you can be listening for those events. And that's a very common thing for like a data scientist to do, like, oh, hey, or, or a trader, right? Hey, oh, wait, that, that NFT just moved. Right. So the kinds of things you might do, you know, they, they currently you might look at an OpenSea, you can look at by just monitoring the chain.